Hello. In this video talking about graphic storytelling, we're going to talk about something that I call containment. Containment is just story elements that are contained or enclosed within the whole story, within the greater parts of the story. Um, think of a chapter in a story, a chapter in a book. It's a contained or enclosed segment of the greater story. In comic book storytelling, a lot of times containment is used to show a difference or a, a different feeling or aspect to that particular part of the story. Here's an example, and I have a list here so I don't leave any types out, hopefully. Uh, the first one is flashback. And flashback is showing part of the story that has taken place previously. It's not right now. It's from a uh, previous or historical point of view. And there's different ways of doing that. Memory within the character's own mind. They're, they're remembering something that happened or some event. It's in their own mind that they're replaying that previous event. Another one is anecdote. That's when one character tells another character or characters about a previous event or something that they did that took place before right now in the story. Fantasy is another type of containment. Um, that could take place in a character's imagination. Uh, usually fantasy would indicate that it's things that are very improbable or unlikely compared to other things that are going on in the story. Dream, very similar to fantasy, except it takes place in the character's unconscious mind, perhaps while they're asleep, literally dreaming. So it's different than telling somebody about something. It's actually taking place in the character's mind unconsciously. Deja vu. Deja vu we've all heard of, it seems. But deja vu means when a character has a feeling or a, a sense that they've done something before, even though they haven't. And you have a vision. Someone could have a vision. A vision is similar to a fantasy with perhaps the distinction or the difference that usually it happens with a character due to some form of an altered state. They, they're dizzy. They've been hit in the head with a frying pan. They're intoxicated. There's something going on that makes them not themselves. Uh, then you have prophecy. Prophecy is predicting things that will happen, that haven't happened yet in the story, but indicating that there's the character or characters think that they will happen. Uh, another type of containment is what I call format change. And that's showing a change in the story by showing a change in the art style or the rendering. Uh, for example, uh, sometimes in a comic book story you'll see where it'll be in full color and then one segment of the story will drop out the color and be in gray tones or black and white. Well, clearly that segment of the story is contained and is meant to be different and apart from the other things going on in the rest of the story, presumably. Uh, so you can drop out color or change the color palette to indicate containment in that part of the story. The style of drawing, that changing the art is changing the style or rendering of the art. Sometimes you'll see a part of a story that is rendered reminiscent of a different artist to show that it's distinct or different, but also perhaps to convey a sense of feeling or mood, um, showing a traditional comic book that all of a sudden switches to something from the 30s, or a different type of art, a different genre of art, to indicate that part of the story is different. Texture, adding or taking away texture to a story is similar to the idea of the color palette, adding or taking away or changing the color palette. Changing the texture of the rendering of the art can also give a different feeling and give it a sense of containment, that section of the story. Panel format, literally the shape or the feel of the panels, uh, the size, the thickening of the outline, and uh, uh, older comics, they don't do it as much anymore it seems, but when a character was dreaming or thinking to themselves or unconscious, they would image things, and the panels would actually have rounded edges as opposed to squared off sharp edges. They would round them off to indicate this part of the story is different. This part of the story is um, something that's taking place differently. Then you have something called mise en abîme, which is a French phrase which, for our purposes, basically means picture in picture. It's when you have a panel, and then within that panel, you will have an image that appears to be a panel. 
but not an inset, not taking one panel and overlaying it on top of another panel. That smaller panel is actually part of the bigger image in the panel. But it shows usually something, not always, but usually something different going on and contrasting going on. You can also use repeated images. The old infinity covers are a form of misana beam, taking one image and repeating it in a smaller version within itself. So misana beam would mean picture in picture. So imagine a character sitting at a bank of monitors and looking at images on the screens. That would be a form of misana beam. A lot of times it's more interesting to try to have contrasting feelings or moods within those different images. There's a famous painting, I don't remember the name off the top of my head, where it showed a image of a wake of a funeral taking place inside a church and there was a casket and there was mourners. It was very somber and very dark and very serious. But there was a window in the church. And through this window you could see outside children running around and playing in the sunshine and having a good time. It was a very contrasted mood to the greater image of the, the mourners in the church. So that window, the frame of the window in the painting was a form of a panel that took place within the greater panel of the painting itself, the edges of the painting itself. So that would be an example of Misana Beam as well. Then you actually have a, more of a cinematic phrase called quick cuts, which is when you use a series of seemingly unrelated panels quickly to provide a theme when it's viewed overall as a single system or a, a single series. The example that I use in my classes is if I had a comic book page that had a, a series of smaller panels and it showed people from various parts of the world all over the place, but they didn't seem to be related. They didn't seem to have a lot to do with themselves. But you see the first panel, the person is saying nine. The next panel takes place somewhere on the other side of the world with someone else very unrelated that says eight. And the next person is somewhere else in the world and they say seven. And the next is six and so on and so on until you get down to zero. Well, when you realize none of these people have anything to do with themselves or with each other, they're all separated by vast distances. But it's the overall viewing of that system that it's actually a countdown. For a, for example, New Year's Eve, you go, oh, okay, now I get it. Now that's how related is they're all counting down. Even though it's taking place vast distances away from each other, they seem unrelated to each other. But viewed as a whole, that series of quick cuts makes sense, as opposed to just quick cuts at random views that, that may not string the story along quite as well. Then you have something called montage, which is um, similar to quick cuts, but it's without the, the use of uh, borders on your panels. So instead of actually having a panel and a panel and a panel, 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 showing different people all around the world, do the same thing, but just don't have edges to your, to your panels, to your, any borders to them, so that it looks almost like a collage. It's called a montage. Uh, then lettering, also talking about containment through the use of lettering. Changing your style of lettering, the size of lettering, the feel of the lettering can actually convey different parts of the story in that containment. Um, lettering style, balloon style, the lettering balloons can actually change as well as part of the lettering. Uh, so these are different ways that you can actually tell your story and have elements of your story be very quickly understood that this part is different than what's going on around it or in other parts of the story. So I hope this is helpful, I hope this is useful. I'm going to try to post some, I'm going to put in some examples. I hope you guys are having fun out there staying safe. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them in the comments or message me. Stay safe, I'll see you soon.